This remake is a little more special than the last one, because this is a remake of my first ever response video. And it's only slightly better than the Saw 1 video. Well, Channel 3 where I live is public access, and it never has anything remotely as interesting as this. It's mostly local sermons, shitty music, and broadcasts of city council meetings, where Cheryl the town nag repeatedly disses the city council just because she can. Also, since he doesn't jump upon seeing the jigsaw mask thingy guy, I guess this guy didn't see the last movie? Oh, to be him for a day. Considering the situation Michael is already in, waking up in a room with a tiny Iron Maiden strapped to his head, he's well past the point of jumping. How much blood will you shed to stay alive, Michael? The key is in Michael's eye socket, and he's been presented the easiest choice in this series so far. On pure adrenaline alone, this dude should be able to cut out the key and save himself. But this is Saw we're talking about here. Even with adrenaline, not everyone will be able to permanently remove their eye without hesitation. Especially if they rely on that eye in order to make a living. So far, in what could loosely be called your life, you've made a living watching others. Society would call you an informant, a rat, a snitch. I call you unworthy of the body you possess, of the life that you've been given. Now we will see if you are willing to look inward rather than outward to give up the one thing you rely on in order to go on living. <laughs> You've got nothing to complain about, dude. Not only are you possibly the stupidest Saw victim in history, you got well more than a minute to cut your stupid eyeball out. We just went over this. At a minute and 43 seconds, the sin tally disappears for a couple frames. I've already solved this case. The victim died because he was stupid. Why are you insisting that no one would hesitate to cut their eyeball out? I get that adrenaline exists, but it's not the same for everyone. Look closer, Detective Matthews. The thing this guy f***ing thinks about is the f***ing steel company logo that was on the death mask. That's like tracking down the serial killer who uses pennies to murder people and saying, Aha! He's been giving us clues all along! To the Denver Mint! The Wilson Steel Warehouse is abandoned, meaning that you can't buy materials from them. One of Jigsaw's devices has the official logo on it. This means that Jigsaw gets his machines from the Wilson Steel Warehouse, meaning that they could find some evidence, or Jigsaw himself, at the Wilson Steel Warehouse. Okay, going in teams of three. I'll go with Team Alpha. Thanks for the completely useless, seemingly exciting dialogue, strange SWAT dude we've never met and we'll never see again. Good luck with Team Alpha, whatever that means. We do see this guy again. His name is Rig. He's a side character in this movie. He also reappears in Saw 3 and 4, but that's not important. I think that's my son. You think? Eric is only unsure if this kid is Daniel at first. He puts it together almost immediately after this. I think that's my son. It's got my son. I'd go as far as saying that Eric simply doesn't want to believe that his son is in a jigsaw game. Where is he? That's a problem you're gonna have to solve before it's too late. I know Jigsaw has a few followers who help him, but how did he learn enough about these people to decide these people must go through my dastardly kill puzzles? He may have read some things, heard some things, but to know them intimately enough to know they needed to be hooked up to death machines? Jigsaw's motive for testing Eric is his abuse of power and not being a good family man. We both know the sort of person you are, sir. Get out of here. The sort of person who guns down an unarmed suspect. That's the sort of person who plants evidence in order to obtain a conviction. The sort of person whose wife leaves him and whose son hates him. John and Amanda could have figured out both of these by stalking him, researching the available public info about him, and remembering the time Eric framed Amanda for drug possession. I was guilty of a lot of things but not the drug charge you framed me for. And since you said followers, we can bring up Hoffman, a man who works on the same police force as Eric and probably knew about his actions. As for everyone else, it's not uncommon for arrest records to be public. John likely just looked up arrests made by Eric Matthews and picked the ones he thought needed to be redeemed. If they weren't public, Hoffman could have provided all of the info John needed. Wait a minute, was that the trap for this door if you use the key? This required one dumbass to turn the key, and another dumbass to look in the peephole for it to work. Unless Jigsaw was expecting the guy who turned the key to also be looking in the peephole, which is also not likely. This trap did not require someone to be looking through the peephole. It just required someone to be in front of the peephole. The bullet doesn't even have to hit someone, it can just be a warning shot. I want a tech team in here now. 
find out where that feed is coming from. After seven minutes of watching the feed, this guy finally asks for a team to check where the feed is coming from. And where's that bomb squad he ordered seven minutes ago? There could be a lot of things happening that delay the bomb squad's arrival. It doesn't really matter. Just hey! I found a door over here! Hey, I pushed on stuff and it worked out. I mean, if you found a door, it's guaranteed that torture clown asshole wanted you to find it, right? How do you not even suspect this at this point? They know that Jigsaw wanted them to find the door, but they also know that there's a nerve agent in their system that will kill them if they don't find an antidote. Three hours from now, the door to this house will open. Unfortunately, you only have two hours to live. Right now, you are breathing in a deadly nerve agent. You've been breathing it since you arrived here. Those of you familiar with the Tokyo subway attacks will know its devastating effects on the human body. The only way to overcome it and walk out that door is to find an antidote. Several are hidden around this house. So whatever door they open has to be entered in order to receive an antidote, otherwise they'll all die. I don't know, but let's tear that possible clue up, because a shredded piece of paper beats an intact piece of paper any day. Xavier isn't tearing up a piece of paper. He's tearing open an envelope that contains Obi's tape. Obi. The f is Obi? Obi. It's my name. Even if we ignore that, the only thing written on the paper is Abby's name, which is incredibly easy to remember. The car. Laura somehow remembers the dude who kidnapped her, even though she never turns around and sees him. And it's dark, and he's in the backseat of a car. You can see in the clip you're showing that Laura looks directly at Abby. And rearview mirrors exist. Right now, you're going in there. I'll kill you where you stand! Ladies and gentlemen, acting! threaten me with a knife. You may as well cut me a little. Exactly what we should be doing until the tech team gets here. Yeah, okay, but why was the tech team five states away? And why aren't they here yet? Are they traveling by Segway? Again, there could be a lot of things happening in the city causing the tech team's delay. At seven minutes and 33 seconds, the screen just randomly goes blank. At first I thought it was a glitch with my computer, but no, th that's in the actual video. Did you remember that Carrie Elway's character from Saw was named Dr. Lawrence Gordon? Because I did not. So how did I write this sin? I did not write this sin. Look, I can understand if someone forgets a character who had like five minutes of screen time, but Gordon was one of the main characters. How did you forget him so easily? We found the door. Dude, the f did you just come in here out of breath looking like you've been stabbed or about to throw up? Jonas looks that way because he's starting to succumb to the nerve agent. If it's stuck, it's a trap. Lady, this whole house is a trap! So, because she's stupid for saying something obvious, whatever's behind this door can't hurt me. Again, whatever open door they find has an antidote, meaning that they have to enter or they'll die. Jigsaw makes these assholes dig for a key in a pool of used needles. And this is where I get off, kids. Do you realize how many stops and robberies Jigsaw must have committed to even gather this many used needles? It's like eight months of work easy. I know he's a puzzle killer who plans ahead, but this is sheer lunacy, which I guess people love since this is only the first of about 15 sequels. With permission, you can buy needles by the box of 100. Considering nobody knows who Jigsaw is at this point, it's not impossible for Team Jigsaw to have bought the needles and said that they had a prescription, or even easier, a business that happens to include a pharmacy. Sure, it would have taken a lot of time, but so does probably every villain's plan. Thank you, TV tropes. In addition to that, the needle pit used for the movie has real needles in it that the filmmakers bought legally. So, if people in real life can gather that many needles within less than a year, so can Team Jigsaw. What the actual f***? The fact that this movie continues from here without any of the witnesses to this horrific act attacking that dude is wrong as hell, and it takes an already flimsy premise and dips it in a pool of the unbelievable. Xavier is significantly bigger than everyone else. Do you really think anyone is going to try to take him on physically? You know, the others are scared of you. Good. 
Hilariously, in order to prepare for this scene, Donnie just recalled the New Kids meeting with the label after they got dropped. Honestly, he's still pissed about that in real life, which is why he won't let Jenny McCarthy vaccinate her dogs. What? Also, for the record, he is literally destroying evidence because he's mad, under the watch of armed police guards who supposedly know the difference between right and wrong. I'll admit it's a little weird that Carrie is allowing this, but most of the police force in this movie is clearly corrupt. After all, they give medals to an officer like Eric Matthews. What do you really want to do to me right now? Huh? What would you have done five years ago? Huh? Would you have followed the manual? Huh? Would you have broken my jaw with a flashlight? <laughs> How the ever-loving f*** would this killer or any human being know that Donnie Wahlberg planted evidence on all these criminals? This movie takes the villain-knowing unknowable to a transcendent plane of the fifth dimension. I mean, Jesus f***ing Christ here, people. Exactly how much bullshit are we as a film-going public going to tolerate in the name of a decent fright? Most court cases are public, meaning that whatever they said under oath would be publicly documented. Since everyone in the nerve gas house is aware that Eric framed them, they probably claimed so in court. You may not remember all those people, but I'm sure they remember you. You were the arresting officer in all their cases, and you were the one who planted all the evidence used to obtain their convictions. You were the one who put them away. Your son is playing a game with a lot of people who don't like you very much, Detective. It would be a shame if they discovered who he was. doing with him this is your father but you know him yeah he's the guy who put me away he set me up tell me that's not your father john then realized that it can't be a coincidence that every single one of these criminals one of them being his apprentice were arrested by the same guy and all had the same defense of the officer who arrested me planted evidence to frame me in addition to that hoffman could have confirmed all of this to john since he works in the same police department as eric well i don't know what's gonna happen next but i feel confident labeling this a convenient seizure how in any way is this seizure convenient how f***ing pathetic is this tech team, eh? They're like an hour or more late, then they take forever so that this asshole has to watch his son maybe die. I mean, Mr. Bean would be more effective than this movie's tech team. Maybe it takes a while to trace where a camera's feed is coming from, and it's not as simple as flipping a switch. I'll take No real police force would allow to happen for 800, Alex. Even ignoring the fact that Carrie is clearly not okay with this, the police force in this movie is corrupt and desperate. Daniel could die any minute, and as far as any of them know, there aren't any options left other than beating the location out of John. Also, thinking a game-playing motherfucker like this gives two shits about being beaten up. Come on, Donnie, didn't you see The Dark Knight three years from now? Eric is at his most desperate. The nerve agent is dangerously close to killing Daniel, and a big guy with a knife is chasing him. As far as Eric is concerned, he's tried everything else, so beating the location out of John is the only option left. On a dying whim, this girl goes down the hall and into this room. And wouldn't you know it, Jigsaw has the perfect little death scenario planned and plotted out for. Voila! Because this asshole's f***ing god, apparently. First of all, we don't know if this trap is meant for Addison because we don't see whose name is on the envelope. Second, nearly every open room in the nerve gas house has a trap in it. Do you really think it's unlikely for her to find a room with a trap in it in a house full of rooms with traps in them? Absolutely nobody saw that Eric and John got into an elevator until they were already going down on it. Eric and John didn't get on the elevator. They were already in the elevator. How do we get out of here? There's a button on the wall. You better hurry. Come on! Secure the warehouse now! Wait, all this time you never secured the warehouse you're in? F***ing what? Or is this just some lazy copy-paste screenwriting going on here? I'm indicting every single one of these motherfucking cops on charges of aggressive incompetence for not checking the very goddamn building they've been standing in the whole motherfucking time. Goddamn, this pisses me off. Rig didn't say check the warehouse. He said secure the warehouse. Meaning, in this case, block all the exits. Since the SWAT team already secured the man who, as far as they knew, was the only threat in the building, they didn't need to block any of the exits at first. Now they have to secure the entire building because John managed to escape the SWAT team's guard. 
fucking finally. You tech guys fucking suck, by the way. Thanks for being useless to everyone but the screenwriter. Again, it could take a long time to trace a camera feed. You gotta need this key when you get inside the house. Eric suddenly trusts Jigsaw. I guess because he thinks his beating 100% worked on that psychopath. Eric is pretty desperate at this point. He's willing to do almost anything to save Daniel. This person put a horse mask on and lay in a bathtub waiting for Eric to show up. Horse mask? Jeremy, that's a pig mask. This is like calling Link Zelda. The big reveal! Daniel was in that room the whole time, and the footage they saw wasn't live but on tapes. It's actually a really good ending. A fun ending. But you put us through a whole bunch of yelling and fighting and stupidity to get us here. Just because you've been stinking up the house cooking swamp rats doesn't mean we get excited when you put a pizza in front of us. I might have to fix that metaphor. Also, how did he not wake up before now or ever make a noise? Oh, f***ing forget it. Team Jigsaw has probably been using tranquilizers for so long that they know how long it takes for it to wear off. They likely timed it so that Daniel would wake up around the same time the safe opened. I found myself a father. A leader. A teacher. More surprises! Amanda was working for Jigsaw all along. But first, let's put her in a room full of criminals. One who's a murderer. Also, I guess she can be a surprise reveal later. I mean, I guess she was supposed to help Daniel stay alive during all that. But that's another plan that could have backfired. What's the movie if Daniel dies? What is Jigsaw's point if he ended up getting killed? For starters, there is no murderer in the nerve gas house besides Amanda. Daniel is a minor thief, Xavier is a drug dealer, Addison is a prostitute, Abby is a serial kidnapper, Laura and Gus's crimes I never stated, but there's no evidence that they're murderers, and Dante, while it's not made explicit, it's implied that he's involved with some kind of gang or mob. You know what? I got enemies, man. Outside these f***ing walls, bro. And they're looking for me. And if they don't find me, they going after the ones closest to me. My family. Second, there was an antidote for everyone, each in a game that Amanda probably knows how to beat. And third, John knew that nobody in the nerve gas house would be willing to murder a child. If you're good at anticipating the human mind, It leaves nothing to chance. Game over. Wait a minute, why? Isn't the SWAT team running around in this building right now? Isn't the van with Jigsaw in the passenger seat still parked outside somewhere? They're just never gonna find this place. I am befuddled. The SWAT team is not in the nerve gas house. They're at a decoy house containing the location of the camera feed. Carrie, we're in the wrong house. They've been dead this whole time. 